On behalf of the very festively dressed parish council, I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's meeting. If you wish to address the council on a resolution or any other subject tonight, please complete the public wishing to address the council form located at the back of the meeting room and turn it into the council clerk prior to the beginning of agenda item G. Start off with item A, approval of minutes. Have a motion by Mr. Adams, second by Mr. Jones uh, to accept the November 22nd, 2022 regular session meeting. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Uh, item B, State or Federal Legislative Updates. I do not see anyone. Item C, Lafouche Parish shouts any citizen. We have none this month. And item D, presentations and our updates. Item two, Parish President to recognize LPG Employee of the Month and our WOW employees for the month of November. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, tonight we actually have uh, three Employee of the Months. We're going to kick a couple of months in one. But uh, these ladies all collaborated together and reached out to our community, students, and parents in the Head Start program to create the successful fall festival. They reached out to local businesses, civic organizations, government agencies, and used community resources to share valuable information to parents and students. Children were able to engage with their peers, both socially and physically, while per, uh, participating in games and learning activities while exploring their community parks. FIS held multiple meetings and, who the text gets really small, I'm getting old, and created a head start for parents and volunteers and time's efforts. Uh, so we'd like to congratulate these three women for putting on an excellent event that not only helped our community, but helped our students learn. Uh, Ms. Celeste Coxon, Ms. Rosa Williams, and Ms. Helen Beeman. Thank you, sir. We'll move into item three. Ms. Karen Collins, CEO of Lady to Sea Hospital, to present an update on the progress of the hospital. Ms. Collins, please just make sure the microphone is on, that it's at your mouth level, and that you state your name and address for the record, please. Karen Collins, 275 West 86th Street, Cutoff, Louisiana. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Uh, I welcome the opportunity to provide an update for the community and to the parish council on the recovery of the hospital. Uh, currently, we have 23 FEMA projects. Um, 11 have been obligated for a total of $20,696,000. Uh, out of that, we've collected about $1.3 million so far. <laughs> so there's still a, a long road ahead. Um, we meet fee uh, weekly with our FEMA uh, representatives and with our consultants on all our projects uh, as far as our recovery efforts. So administration and numerous departments remain housed in on the trailers that we have across from the main hospital ED location. We have medical records and business services are housed there so patients can um, come to that facility to get assistance to get medical records and billing information. The emergency department remains in the previous rehab building and continues to provide emergency care 24-7. That department is so supported by x-ray services, CT, ultrasound, and respiratory therapy, so those services continue. Laboratory services are housed in a different building on the campus. Um, and they will remain there even after we move to our temporary facility. Dialysis has a temporary facility next door to the administrative buildings and is providing dialysis services on an outpatient basis for those patients uh, that need that service. The permanent dialysis building is under renovation and that should be completed by the middle of March. So we are excited to see that happen uh, in those patients. And then we'll be able to also uh, expand our current census that we have when we have more um, chairs available. Our interim or temporary hospital construction has begun off-site. We're very happy to see that um, construction begin. The modular units will be arriving in February for the beginning of installation. Uh, we awarded the bid for the site construction last week to Grand Isle Shipyard, and the work will begin this week on the site preparation. So all is ready for the installation, uh, the beginning installation of the buildings in February. We anticipate completion of the building and equipment installation and regulatory surveys by the end of May, so that all would be completed and then we can move into the facility the first week in June. Uh, we're very excited to see the project underway. Uh, the that 
the temporary hospital will house 10 inpatient beds, um, nine emergency department beds, full imaging with x-ray, CT, MRI, mammography, ultrasound, and DEXA scan. This will be a big plus for the community so they don't have to travel anymore to get those services. Those were all things they could get before. And they, since the storm, they've been having to travel. Once the emergency department relocates to the interim hospital, then the rehab department can move back to their building. So we're gonna be playing a little uh, musical chairs to get everybody back to where they were previously. Uh, currently, we offer rehab services in trailers that are in front of the dialysis building. Uh, and those numbers are back to where they were pre-IDA. So they're really servicing a large amount of patients. The emergency room also has uh, gone back up to the census that they saw prior to the storm. So we're very excited that the, that way we know that patients are being able to access emergency services. The main hospital, so we're working closely with FEMA on the main hospital project and the completion of all the documentation needed for damages. This has been a very tedious process involving an 88,000 square foot building with complex systems. The assessment is two to 300 pages with thousands of line items. Uh, we are meeting frequently to try to tie this up. This week we have three meetings, trying to hammer out the differences that we have and resolve those issues so that we can move forward. The most frequent question that we're asking in the community is what's gonna happen to the main hospital? Are they tearing it down? Are they fixing it? What is gonna happen? So we requested a determination from FEMA based on the 50% rule for repair or replacement where FEMA will consider a building eligible for replacement if the repair costs exceed 50% of the replacement costs. We believe that we exceed the 50% threshold in our own calculations, but that determination still has to be made by FEMA. And they're not gonna make that decision lightly because you're talking about $40 million of construction. So, uh, but we are um, pretty confident that we will meet that threshold. We do have a building that was built in 1978, uh, would have to be totally revamped to meet all the current codes and standards required for a medical facility. We hope to have that determination made in the next couple of months. It has been a very long, long process, uh, and it's not finished yet. <laughs> so we continue to work down that road. Um, regardless, though, we still anticipate two to three years till the main hospital is ready to open again. Uh, if it would be rebuilt, we're still looking definitely at the end of 25 before that would be completed. So as not to slow down our recovery, we have initiated design services with an architectural firm uh, through a competitive selection process, uh, we selected WHLC Architects from Baton Rouge, and we will begin the initial high-level schematic design of a replacement facility. Regardless if the hospital would be renovated, pretty much the entire building would have to be gutted, relocated walls to meet all the current standards for the size of different facilities and services. So a recap of our current services and locations for our community so they know where to find us. Uh, emergency services are available 24-7, and that is located across from our uh, Lady of the Sea Medical Clinic cutoff. Outpatient x-ray, CT, and ultrasound, and lab services are available um, at the cutoff clinic. So you can go there, get registered. People can have their blood drawn there. So our patients can all have, still have services that are um, locally. Sometimes it's a little bit hard for them to maneuver and figure out where to go, but normally if they go to one of the clinics, they can have those services done there. Rehab, uh, including adult and pediatric, physical, occupational, and speech ther uh, therapy. Services are available in trailers that are in front of the dialysis um, unit, and that's Monday through Friday. All right, we have our home health services available, and that's since right after the storm. Um, and Lady C Medical Clinics, Cutoff and LaRose, are both open um, for medical and behavioral services. And there are, like I said, the location for blood draws for the lab services. And our clinic in Cutoff is also open till eight o'clock Monday through Friday and nine to three on the weekends. So providing greater access to our community for um, services then. Uh, and we always encourage our community members to go to our website or Facebook page where they have all those services listed, telling them exactly the street address of where, where it's located so they can find it. And all the important numbers, correct. And we're just, we're really excited to see, I've been waiting to see some dirt turned uh, <laughs> so we could know that the temporary hospital is coming. So that site construction is beginning this week the site prep for the temporary hospital. Anybody with any questions for Ms. Collins? Mark. Ms. I, uh, I, wanted to, I want to thank Karen for coming and, and talking with us tonight. I've uh, been getting a lot of questions from the public. There's a lot of misinformation going on, and I knew if she came out and uh, talked to us, it would settle everybody's mind. Um, and just to remind everyone, like Ms. Karen said, the website is up and running. It is very uh, accurate and current. So if you have any questions or any, anything you're questioning about Lady of the Sea Hospital, go to the website, look it up, 
And um, thank you for coming, Karen. Sure, thank you. Our goal is always to bring the services back to our community as quickly as possible. And the staff, uh, my staff's done an exceptional job of doing just that. Thank you, Mrs. Chesson. Mr. Lorraine. Yeah, you were saying earlier about it's up in the air about what they're going to do with the building through FEMA and. Well, the FEMA decision, the determination of huh? whether the determination from FEMA on whether the building is eligible for replacement. Okay, so we're not sure yet. Correct. How long is you said a couple of months? We hopeful. Okay. Now let me ask you this question. I know a lot of people at one time would go do blood work instead of going to Homer. You do the blood work there, mm -hmm. and you ship it over there. Is that down compared to what it used to be? No, are we. We always did the blood work ourselves. We did ship special tests that had to be done. No, no. And we, still, and we are still doing that now. I'm just saying when the hospital was there compared mm -hmm. to what you do now, mm -hmm. is there a big difference of less people doing this? For, specifically for blood tests or just services? Oh, whatever. For the services that we have, it's still down a little bit, but we don't have all the services that we had before. Right. We'll come back in the, in the temporary facility. We see and a lot of people, of course, having to go for a mammography, which is something that we did a lot of studies on, and we just don't have that yet. So. And if somebody uses the emergency room, actually you don't have a place to put them. So where do you send most of the patients? We don't have an inpatient unit right now. We will in the temporary hospital. Patients that require hospitalization are given a choice on where they want to go if the service is available to wherever they want to go and if they have a physician able to provide care there. Is it, we ask the patient first. So it's up to them. So it's up to the patient. Unless the service isn't provided where they want to go. Okay. I mean, you may not have a physician on call for a specific, you know, it's very, uh, you know, the patient might say, I want to go to Austin or New Orleans, but if they don't have the service that the patient needs, they're available through the emergency room because you have to go through the emergency room to transfer a patient. Then the patient would have to be given an alternate site. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lorraine. Thank you, Ms. Collins for the update. Thank you. Item number four, presentation by Energy regarding the status of the streetlights in the parish. Thank you all for having us this evening. Uh, first up, I would like to introduce you to Patrick Hamby, who is our new regional customer service manager for Energy. Uh, Y'all have all met Al Galindo, who was um, my boss previously, who retired at the end of November. So I'd like to introduce Patrick to come up and say a few words first. Thank you, Paula. I had the opportunity to meet each and every one of you here just about five minutes ago. Can I um, just get your name and address for the record? Yes, and you absolutely. Can Rome when you come back up, please. Patrick Hamby, Entergy, Louisiana, 4809 Jefferson Highway, Jefferson, Louisiana. Thank and you. Thank you. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet each and every one of you just a few minutes ago, and it's uh, my pleasure to be here tonight. Paula says I'm her boss. Uh, I'm really learning from her. And I'm also learning from Mr. Lorraine. I apologize. I should have knew in advance to, uh, to put on a red coat. So next year I will have a red coat. <laughs> I will have a red coat, but thank you again. I appreciate looking forward to looking uh, and meeting and working with y'all in the future. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Patrick. Um, we're here tonight to give you all an update on Lafouche Parish Lighting. I'm going to call up Mr. Chad Oakwin, who is our Louisiana Lighting Supervisor. Chad, if you'll come up and give a presentation. Um, while Chad's making his way up here, I'll let you know, and I've talked to a few, I know Archie knows, um, and a few of you guys know that uh, last week and this week, and Chad will tell you a little bit about that, we do have special contract crews in Lafouche Parish handling our, handling our backlog. So as Chad is talking and talking about that, um, if y'all think of any particular areas that need some attention, uh, please send them to me right away while we have some crews here working. So I'll turn it over to Chad for you. Good evening, Chad Oakwin. Uh, business location is 4809 Jefferson Highway in Jefferson Parish. Uh, I reside in St. Charles Parish as a regular resident. Uh, this is a PowerPoint that was put together a couple of days ago. Uh, as of right now, there's 110 orders in our backlog in the energy system that customers called in or made a report on. They have 281 orders completed and our click program that was reported by customers. And presently, two trucks are working throughout the Lockport network on backlog of customer call light tickets, 
I'm planning to continue working the backlog down until it's a manageable number. Uh, the manageable number for the energy side is going to be about a backlog of about 50 to 75 orders on a weekly basis. Uh, we do have a new contract that's getting ready to go out for bid on the energy system, so we'll be getting another vendor most likely or adding on to our resources as well to where we can man up maybe a couple more extra trucks when the backlog gets up above that 75 mark, we're going to add more resources to bring it back down. And I do check these numbers on a daily basis, whether I'm at home or at work. Uh, it's a lifelong project for me. So the Ida Streetlight Restoration Project, we had started back in February. We had a third party came in and actually walked down in all the parishes that were affected by Ida, identified any lights that were missing, damaged, they're working with damage or not working with any damage. Uh, in Lafouche Parish, they had 4,792 4, lights were identified. And then we worked on that project till September this year and repaired 4,476 lights were completed. And that was installing stuff that came down when the pole was changed and everything else after that. Uh, on the restoration project, they had 316 lights that are left on the list when we stopped the project in September and then we started working on the actual customer call in the backlog. We figured that 75 percent are done there's no customer reports of lights missing or any complaints and um, when we did the project I had roughly about 75 trucks running between two or three different parishes fixing we repaired over 27,000 lights between four networks and from February to September. So it was a lot of volume and some may have gotten fixed and they didn't turn them in or we didn't catch it to record it. So that's why the 75% uh, is a, uh, just a number we figure and that may be completed. Uh, proposal presently working two trucks throughout Lockport's network on backlogs of customer called lighting tickets. And I plan to continue working the backlog down to a manageable number. After we get to a manageable number, we're going to reassess the backlog numbers and determine what size team is needed to continue the repairs. Uh, one of our impacts that we're trying to do is limiting the trucks making multiple visits to the same light, saving fuel and emissions. And by getting a solid number of lighting tickets needed to work, a true number to make the remaining repairs. Uh, that's kind of how we gauge in the backlog and what we have left in each parish to repair. And final closing, the investment by energy in the Fouche Parish, energy is repaired, replaced, and installed. A mixture of transformers, secondary, replaced poles, for a total of 47, 57 lights that has been documented. All the crews working will listen to our customers and make repairs on lights asked by the customer on the same street without an order. Anyone with any questions on that? Uh, that Mr. That, Melvin? I'm sorry, sorry. Mr. Hatzel. That last statement, what do you mean? Like if a truck's on the street, a customer can go tell them, hey, this light needs to be fixed, they're going to fix it right there. And they'll, they'll roll there as soon as they make that repair, they'll go to the next one that the customer's saying, hey, it's out, and they fix it. Okay. Because with, with the way I roll with the, tr the crews, and I lead a lot of them around, and my customers are their customers. So as soon as they, if they drive away and a customer calls back, hey, the truck didn't listen, they drove away, then there's going to be other consequences on the back end on the, on the business side of it because <clears throat> they're serving energy by working for us, but it's also providing to all customer base at the same time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Grove. Thank you for coming. So uh, I guess the biggest thing that I have is, uh, I mean, there's so many out. I mean, y'all contracting people out to do this work. So, I mean, if there's an outage in my house, I get a text that says the outage has been located at your house you know and it may be back on so I know there's software out there I'm sure you get some kind of report from these subs that y'all hiring let you know that the work is done on a certain street similar to like when we have a power outage like that I fix this light on good right. street you get no work oh um, well I actually put together a uh, spreadsheet for them and I'm handing it to them on paper and they go on and write down what repair was made what was done and the date it was repaired and then we're going to the system and actually clear that ticket so we have an electronic stamp of when that lighting was fixed. Is there any kind of way, that if, it's a, if it's an Excel sheet, that could be shared through SharePoint or OneDrive or something with Mark? I mean, it might be over, it might, uh, somebody in our DPW office to where we can know what y'all checking off the list? 
because there's no way of us knowing what's done. Right. I, I mean, I can pull up a report of completed orders. Yeah. And then we or can maybe, pull it from hey, fax frame. that in if, you got, if we don't have the technology. Some, send it to our DPW department. These were done this week, or, or, or this was done Monday through Wednesday. That way we know what's going on. Guys, that's got a good system to do it. And I think he's, he's following through on a lot of stuff, but I got a lot of repeat things. Man, he came, it worked for two days, it's not working again. He could look and say, oh, they did go look this one on Wednesday. Uh, you know, at least know what's done. Because, I mean, I, it's nice to say if you got somebody, they're here. I'd have to go right all around my district to see if it's working and, you know. Michael, we can do that. What Chad's team has been doing for us is, um, in the other parishes, is providing me with that spreadsheet at the end of the week. And on Monday, Tuesdays, I've been providing that to the parish, and they've been sharing it with the council. So if y'all would like that, we can do the same thing for you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jones. Okay. Uh, do you have any trucks working in the typical area on the contractors right now? Sure do. Uh, we, uh, I actually got one truck that's working out of the Lambda Building Network. And uh, actually, when Paul had mentioned about Thibodeau, we have about 53 lights in the Thibodeau area. Can you move the mic back on? They're assessing <coughs> lights this week okay. as, the, as the trucks are running. They're, uh, I'm actually having them on a 512 shift. So they're running 12-hour days, five days a week. And, and can you repeat that, what you said? Uh, okay. As of right truck, now, just in truck, the Entergy no. system? No, if a truck is working on a light, a couple pulls down, and one is out and I report it, is that energy guy can get to that, or do he need a work order before he can touch the next light? If, if you catch our contractor, he's working off of paper. He's not on a computer system. But if you catch him on the street and says, hey, this light's not working right here or two lights down is not working, he'll leave when the one he's finished is repaired. He'll go to that one that the customer tells him about and fix his it. contractor, right not, down the, not the energy yeah. employee, the contractor. right? Energy employee should take care of it, but we don't have any in energy employees running street lighting. It's all contractor based and uh, subbed out to vendor. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Mr. Otan. Yeah, so... Um, I want to thank Paula. She's been very responsive since she stepped into this role. Um, and I'm glad to hear that you say there's some kind of coordination going on now. Uh, my biggest complaint is energy absolutely 100% dropped the ball in coordination with this. When you have one contractor pulling poles out, another contractor coming in to put the street lights up, but the pole is gone. That's, that's horrible. It's, first off, they're tearing up personal private property, which still hasn't been repaired to this day throughout our district. Um, and I think that there could have been a much better job, and I hope in the future is a much better job in coordinating all these contractors where they work together and get things accomplished in a much more structured, organized manner. Um, I personally work multiple, multiple fatality accidents because of, and I'm not saying it's directly related to streetlights, but I can tell you that Highway 308 was dark as heck for way too long. Meanwhile, there was lights being put up in subdivisions, in the back of subdivisions. To me, it was just, there, was, there was no prioritized coordination. It, it was just really unfortunate, and I hope we learn from this, and energy does a much better job going forward. And I've expressed this before, and I'll just, I'll continue to reiterate that to make sure this, this stays as a main point that we do better next time. Sure. Thank you, sir. Mr. Melvin. Yes, again, thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. And look, just like we the face of the, of, of the constituents, we have to hear all the calls, et cetera, et cetera, our day jobs as well. So it's not nothing personal, but again, y'all y'all the front lines. I don't know, do y'all get calls from the public or just from the, just from the uh, governments and things or no? Okay, so I, um, I know when we, we give projections, okay? So I'm just gonna backtrack just a little. So I know it was, it, it was projected, you know, end of March 22, then it was or end of the first quarter, a second quarter, which was end of June. So again, you know, if I pass that on to my people, I'm the face that I'm getting yelled at. They don't have a conduit to you, uh, excuse the pun, right? So my point is, uh, that would be good to do in the future is, is be sure you have your, your ducks in a row uh, for that. But also, uh, I, I, Archie and I even met with, uh, you know, Green, Dr. Green came over, met with us, and I've sent three different emails about lights out just in my neighborhood alone, and there was about 19 lights that were still out last time I sent it. Well when I copied Craig Green on some things, um, the next day I had truck checking lights. And this is over a month ago. I saw, well, that was quick. All four lights on my street alone are still out. Now, I didn't want to be the first one as a councilman in my district to have the lights back on, okay? So I didn't request anything from me until this year, okay? But I listed it as being an outage. 
three emails still out, don't know what, when I'm going to get some lights. And um, uh, again, I, I just know that the optics of a lot of things, you know, don't look good over a year later. And I know it was a disaster. I'm not denying that, but I'm just based on projections we were going on, as well as a lot of things we read in papers about surcharges, raises, et cetera, et cetera, just kind of scratching our head. And, and look, I, I'm a believer in competition. I like a good old American dream, and unfortunately, we don't have choices. Because if there were choices, it would make things move a little faster for customer service as, as a whole, okay? But that's just uh, what things I'm hearing on the street. And again, fact is I, I sent email three times. I, I'll send it again. It'll be number four. But I, I was just hoping that, again, I, I know y'all are busy. I, I'm just hoping we can see some traction because I'm not scared of the dark, but I get a lot of calls from elderly people walking at night. Um, I had somebody walking in my neighborhood the other night, no flashlight, no reflectors, no nothing. And... Uh, I'm glad I, I didn't run them over, you know? Thanks for the info, Bo. Um, I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna look at the list Chad has of the Thibodeau area. I know which neighborhood you're talking about. I'll look at that list and see what's on that list. Um, and I'll be happy to share it with you to see, make sure that the ones you're talking about are on our list. Yes, ma'am. And look, we all okay. want to move forward, no yeah, doubt. Absolutely. Thank you all. Okay. okay. Thanks, sir. Mr. Lorraine. Yeah. Uh, the way I do it, I send all my requests in to the guy that works for the parish. Do friend. And I, let, and I keep a copy. The problem is to get an exact update. You know how many people is calling that I don't know about? Not everybody knows who's calling. I only know the ones that I keep up with that I send in. But you get on the computer and you can, or you talk to energy, and there's a lot of people that's asking for their lights that, that we don't have control over. So that, that's where one of the problems comes in. And nobody can do nothing about that. And I'm still waiting. Hopefully, I don't know if they're on the, the lights at the boat launch in Golden Meadow and, and Leeville. I've been asking that for quite a while because a lot of them guys, duck season's open and, and fishing is biting and, and it's pretty dark. But whatever you can do. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. those I added personally onto the list myself, so I know they're added there for you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lorraine. Mr. Arby. Yeah, again, Paul, I want to thank you all for coming out here and giving us a report tonight because like every other councilman sitting up here, we all get all phone calls about light, street, light, street, light, street, lights. Mm -hmm. And again, I uh, appreciate you all bringing in some more contractors into the parish to try to help with this situation because it's, it's been real bad. But again, it looks like you all trying to get a hold of it and you all trying to get it in the right direction. So. I want to thank you all for that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Are public or private streets, can they be addressed at the same time as these public streets? I have a lady that's been calling me for quite some time, and she owns a trailer park that's two long streets. And she's got some lights. I think she pays. I don't know if she pays, if they're metered or if she pays monthly for the lights to, to light up the street. Uh, she called me with some concerns that it's on the same meter or the same line as there sewage plant, the lights still aren't fixed, and she's continuously paying the bill because if not, then the sewer plant for the neighborhood would be cut off. So I'll send you her information if somebody could, can reach out. And I'm not sure if it's a, an issue with the, the lights themselves not working or a solution for the billing issue until the lights are fixed and keeping the, the sewage running. So uh, I'll look Ms. into her account personally. Send it Thank to you. Me. Mr. Adams. Address. I don't have a light question. I just got a question about the sub in Chack Bay. I mean, I, is it commissioned in? Is it working? I'm just asking. I, I passed that. I just never noticed. I can look into it. Last time okay. I had looked into it, it was about to be okay. commissioned in. So it should be any day now. Okay. That's Adams, cool. I I'll wondering. look into it for you. All right. Substation in Chack Bay. All righty. Thank you guys for the update. And I do want to let y'all know that um, that every parish and area is dealing with this same lighting thing. And if y'all get some crazy questions, Dylan and Archie, it's because um, I do want to let y'all know in, in a lot of ways, Lafouche is ahead of the curve in a lot of other parishes. Um, I left a meeting in Ascension Parish today and told them to call Lafouche Parish because as far as lighting and subdivision ordinances, y'all are ahead of the game in most parishes. So congratulations. And I told, I told a few parishes to call Lafouche because y'all know what y'all doing. So, congrats. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, item E, legal advisory report. We have none. Item F, engineers and architects reports. Good evening, Jack Plazos with T. Baker Smith, 1100 South Acadia uh, Road in Thibodeau. I, didn't, I don't have a slideshow, but I did pass out a handout with a few updates on our projects. Uh, the east side drainage uh, improvements project, uh, you know phase one is complete. Uh, we did receive our record drawings from uh, LA Contracting today, and their final invoice is uh, now in process. Um, I think I mentioned before that we're coordinating with DOTD on phase two as well as with public works to refine that scope of work and budget and maximize that project for the remaining uh, funds. Um, west side drainage, you know that we submitted a statewide flood control application back at the end of September. Uh, that's still under review. We'll probably start to get some feedback from DOTD in February or March. And lastly is the geographical uh, information portal, the GIS portal. Um, phase one is complete on that mapping system. Uh, that included parish boundaries, municipalities, uh, facilities, rec districts. Uh, we're working on phase two, which is uh, mostly roadways and other infrastructure like drainage right of ways, drainage servitudes. Um, and we are scheduled to meet with Public Works this week to coordinate our tasks and discuss process, pro, uh, progress. Sorry. So uh, that's what I have to report on. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to entertain them. Anybody have anything for Mr. Jack? All righty. Thank you, Jack. Okay. And have thank a Merry you. Christmas, sir. You too. Merry Christmas. Good evening, Laura Barnes with GIS um, 197 Elysian Drive in Homa. So a few updates for you this evening. Uh, the first project is the Cyprian pump station. Um, previously, we were waiting on the delivery of the solenoid valves for the diesel lines. Those were received and installed. Um, we have testing planned for Thursday, and if all goes well, then we can close out this project. Next up is Butch Hill Pump Station. So we are in the final design phase um, of the pump station. The coastal use permit application was submitted in August. It is administratively complete. We have gotten a couple of questions um, on the HMIA uh, that we responded to in early November. The Ludovine Pump Station. So this is a, uh, a coordination between Lafouche Parish CPRA. The owner is North Lafouche. Uh, that final design package was submitted um, and is currently under review by CPRA. We are anticipating uh, the go-ahead to uh, advertise this project in January. The Valentine Pontoon Bridge Rehab Project. Um, we are finishing up final design. We should be submitting that package um, to you guys as well as DOTD for a cursory review um, on next week. Um, at that point, the critical path will be the raise grant um, agreement. Uh, we have, a, I think we're attempting to schedule a meeting with uh, the Federal Highway Administration. They are facilitating that grant um, in January. The Grand Bayou Freshwater Reintroduction. So we did have a successful meeting with the landowner uh, right before Thanksgiving. Um, so we do have a location for that pump station so we can begin uh, preliminary design. And again, this is anticipated to be um, a 1200 CFS pump station. I don't have a slide for the Grand Bayou emergency dredging. Um, we did put out a package for that. The contractor, successful contractor is Weeks Marine. Um, they will have a notice to proceed starting on Thursday. And this is to do um, emergency dredging for all the debris. Um, that you've probably seen under the Burglar Rose Highway. Um, so they will be dredging from the GIWW down to the bridge and then south of that to an elevation of minus six to kind of get all that cleaned out and the water flowing again. Um, 
Let's see. All right. So the collection facility. So the study and report phase, we're currently working on that and should be submitting that by the end of the week. We're making some geotech um, assumptions for that. Uh, other things that we have in progress, we've completed the survey of the site. ELOS is beginning on the environmental permitting process and the geotech investigations will begin after the phase one uh, environmental site assessment is complete. The Hurricane Ida pump station rehab, so those six pump stations, we had completed the assessment phase of those, submitted those. I know that HGA, FEMA, all work, Lafouche Parish, all working together. We did have um, uh, participated in a meeting last week with FEMA. I think we got a clear path forward um, on how to um, revamp some of those assessment reports, um, and we will be submitting those before Christmas. Sanchez Bridge Inspection and Design. So the Sanchez Road over Grand Bayou. Um, this is a administratively complete, so we are actually in the process of closing this out. Um, and that, again, was repair work. That bridge is um, uh, included in the bridge investment program, which I believe we should be hearing at the end of this year or early next year on uh, selection of those. The Eunice Alamo pump station, so we're in the final design phase. Um, this project is going to replace uh, the existing pump and engine with another currently owned by Lafouche Parish. Um, and so we should be wrapping that up in January, February. And I believe this is the last one, Lockport Elevated Boardwalk. Um, so we have completed the survey of the uh, phase two and phase three kind of uh, preliminary locations, uh, routes that we're going to go. Um, and we are coordinating with ELOS so that they can begin the permitting process. But just an idea, the, um, let me grab my numbers right here. So I think the phase one, which is the yellow line on there, that's what's currently out there. It's about 375 feet. And then we've identified uh, a route for phase two, which is in the red, which is about 1,200 feet. Uh, and then coming back another 1,300 feet in the purple. Anybody with any questions for Ms. Laura? Mr. Oten. I'll just make a comment, Mr. President, because you wouldn't copy, but Gary with the Louisiana Wild Irish group sent me a message last week, and I, I unfortunately didn't see it till today. They were interested in planting more cypress trees that were lost due to the hurricane and then getting in there planting more irises. He just wanted to make sure that it wouldn't conflict with whatever future. And So I have not responded to him. I sent him a message today saying, hey, sorry, I, I missed the, the call. Have you all taken any action? Let us know. So if you just follow me that email, and I can send him the, the preliminary sketch of what they have drawn out about where it's going to go, and he can kind of work around that if he wants to go in there and plant some stuff. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Ms. Laura, and Thank you have you. a Merry Christmas. Yeah. Item G, public wishing to address the council. Ms. Carlene? No one, thank you. All right. Item H, council reports, news, or announcements. Anyone? Mr. Lorraine? Yes, at this time, I'd like to thank the people of War 10 for supporting the veteran stacks. It passed 86% for, 14% no. And it was a renewal, 1,097 yes, 181 no. So I'm sure that them guys are real happy. And again, we worked hard for it, and we want to thank the people that went and supported. Also, I want to give a little shout out to Fire District 3. On December the 10th, which was Saturday, they had their open house at the Cutoff Youth Center. And quite a few people showed up. They told me about 1,200 people actually showed up. And there were quite other organizations involved. I think the ambulance, the port commission, and if I left somebody out, well, I'm sorry, and the firemen. So I want to give them a shout out because they don't just put out fires. They are first responders, and they really do a lot for the community. And it doesn't matter what the disaster is, they'll be there. And once again, thank all the firemen at Fire District 3 and also all the other firemen in the parish, including Norman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lorraine. Mr. Melvin. Is this uh, what we're wishing? Merry Christmas and all that we're yeah. doing okay? I'd just like to wish everyone Merry Christmas. Uh, be safe and uh, during these holidays. I'd also like to give my best to the newly elected officials who will be beginning their terms in January. 
my fellow council members, Merry Christmas. God bless you and your families and for all that, you know, serve the parish. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Chasson. Okay, yes. Um, Daniel mentioned what happened at the Cutoff Youth Center. It was all the first responders. It was their open house, and they did a toy drive giveaway, and uh, the kids got to meet with Santa. It was it was a really an, an amazing day for everybody down in Cutoff. Um, I also want to announce that on Tuesday, December 20th, at the Cutoff Youth Center, the library is going to be there with a dulcimer and drums Christmas. Um, if you go to the library's Facebook page or their website, they do list all these dates and times when this is happening. So it's going to be a, a lively and festive holiday concert at, Lafouche, uh, at the Cutoff Youth Center. The time is 10 a.m., so that's going to be on December 20th at 10 a.m. It's a Tuesday. Also, on the 28th, the kids are out of school. They're going to have the dinosaur experience. That is going to be at the Cutoff Youth Center at 9.30 in the morning. Um, so bring the kids, 9.30, it's going to be a great time at the Cutoff Youth Center with the library. So look at Lafouche Parish Library and you'll know what's going on. Um, they're there every Tuesday at 11.30, at, I'm sorry, 10.30 doing story time. And then the library is there uh, working out of their trucks. If you need any library, uh, printing, books, anything like that, movies, go check them out. Uh, and I want to... Uh, Tell everybody Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and y'all be safe out there on the roads and in this weather that's coming. Um, let's all get home safe to our families. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Araby. Yeah, I want to uh, thank the administration and all the departments under the administration, and also the Raceland and Lockport Field Office for taking care of all the work order requests that I sent in for. 2022. Those guys uh, took care of a lot of the projects for me, along with the administration, and I want to thank them for it too. Also, I'd like to wish all the employees a Merry Christmas and a Happy and Safe New Year, and I'm looking forward to working with all of those in 2023. Also, to the residents of Lafouche Parish, Merry Christmas and have a safe, Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Grew. Yeah, just to echo TA's uh, comments, I won't be able to make the luncheon tomorrow uh, unless things change at work, but I really appreciate all the work that employees have done this year. Uh, the continuity we have with the council and the department heads has been really good, and the communication has been really good, so I want to thank you all for this year. Uh, also, from the Grove family, I want to wish all the residents of Foosh Parish a very safe and joyous Merry Christmas and happy season. Happy holidays, I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. We I left out the Golden Medal Rotary. They had a, a function December the 10th, uh, Christmas parade, and they also had hot dogs and hamburgers, whatever, at the park, served a bunch of little kids. And uh, I guess if everybody's wishing everybody a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, I'm going to do the same thing. Go ahead. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everybody. And don't drink and drive. Thank you, Mr. Lorraine. This has probably been the, the best group of dysfunction I've been able to be a part of. So as we, we look around here, we don't always agree 100% all the time, but everybody has their heart in it, and we're all, you know, out for the same thing. So thank you, guys. Mr. Jones? Remember, Jesus is the reason for this season. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's from the Jones family. All righty. Merry Christmas. Thank you, T-Boo. Item I, public hearing and ordinances for ratification. I have a motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Adams to open public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes nine yeas, zero nays. Item number five, ordinance recognizing the tacit dedication of Warehouse Street, the entire length of 475 feet, more or less, and the entire width of 40 foot of Greenwood Plantation Road, Ward 1, District 2, Thibodeau, Louisiana, into the parish system and hereby placed onto the Lafouche Parish Government Public Street List and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer any and all relevant documents. Um, two public hearings are required. Our first public hearing was held at the 11-22-22 uh, Lafouche Parish Council meeting. Uh, it was deferred to this meeting for the second public hearing. So this is our second public hearing. Any public comment? On item five, second call for public comment, third and final call for public comment. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Adams, second by Mr. Jones uh, for ordinance number five. Any public comment on the ordinance itself? Second call public, 
Third and final call, public. Any council discussion? Mr. Uh, Otan. Yeah, so first off, I just want to thank the administration for my interrogation of understanding the street. Um, and, and I thank them for re continuously reminding me that they were just unbiased and letting us know what stood. And, and I, for me, this is going to be a, a no-go because I still am not I'm still not clear on the two public streets on either side that landowners don't have access to a public street. And, you know, I, I don't even know why, to be honest, I'm not even sure why the public, there was ever public drainage because if they have property that, that's adjacent, headed to drainage, I don't understand why the parish is taking care of that. I do understand the parish does do repairs when they do drainage work, and, and so I do understand that there was real work done. Um, but for me, this is just one of those really gray area ones that I have a tough time swallowing. and. And uh, anyway, so, but thanks to the administration for giving me all of the information that I requested. I appreciate it. Thanks, sir. Mr. Lorraine. Yeah, so this, was this a shell road prior or a blacktop road or whatever? What was it? The 400 something feet? It's, it's blacktop. It was blacktop, but it was never in the system. Nope. So, so the issue we run into is that the, the property owner that's in this middle street that Councilman, Orman, uh, Councilman Otan referred to, is trying to subdivide it. The property he subdivides does not, it faces Warehouse Road. It doesn't face either one of the two other streets. Right. So planning was having an issue with letting him subdivide it because it technically was not a public street. But ever since Councilman Dalot was in office, we've maintained drainage, we've done road improvements to it. Same thing we went through with Plaisance Drive years ago with Mr. Fertitta. You know, the, we, we have affidavits that said we've, we've, taken, it, we've taken care of it. So through a tacit dedication, it's technically a public street. You guys just have to ratify it. But there's a lot of others that fall into this category throughout the whole parish. All right. Any other comment? All right. We'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Who's the nay? All right. That'd be six yeas. Motion passes with six yeas. Three nays being Mr. Oten, Mr. Araby, and Mr. Lorraine. Okay, item six, ordinance establishing four-way stops at the intersection of Fern Lane and Market Street, Emerald Lane and Market Street, and Garden Lane and Market Street. Race in Louisiana, Ward 3, District 6, Parish of Lafouche de Louisiana, installing the necessary four-way stop signs at each intersection and providing penalties for the violations thereof. Motion by Mr. Araby, second by Mr. Adams. Any discussion? Any public comment? Second call public, third and final call public, any council discussion? All right, we'll take it to a vote, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item seven, ordinance establishing three-way stops at the intersections of Fern Lane Saint Philip, and St. Philip Street, Emerald Lane and St. Philip Street, and Garden Lane and St. Philip Street, Race in Louisiana, Ward 3, District 6, Parish of Lafouche, State of Louisiana, installing the necessary three-way stop signs at each intersection and providing penalties for the violations thereof. Motion by Mr. Araby, second by Mr. Adams. Any public comment? Second call public, third and final call public. Any council discussion? Take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item number eight, ordinance approving a servitude agreement between L&C Cattle Company Incorporated and the Lafouche Parish Government in the Raceland area and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement and any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Araby, second by Mr. Otan. Any public comment? Second call public. Third and final call public. Any council discussion? All right, we'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 9, Ordinance Amending and Reenacting Chapter 8, Animals and Fowl of the Code of Ordinances as it pertains to the Lafouche Parish Animal Shelter and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Adams, second by Mr. Jones. Any public comment? Second call public. Third and final call public. Any council discussion? We'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes nine yeas, zero nays. Item 10 will be deferred to the January 10th, 2023 Parish Council meeting. Item 11, ordinance providing for a 2022 supplemental appropriation 22-019 within the 2022 operations and maintenance budget and capital outlay budget to create a budget for maintenance of St. Louis Canal and increase budget for industrial flood wall 10027 and authorizing the parish president to sign execute and administer said transactions as provided for by article 6 of the Lafouche parish home rule charter motion by mr melvin second by mr ota any public comment second call public third and final call public any council discussion 
All right, we'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Uh, I have a motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Adams uh, to close uh, public, public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item J, proposed ordinances. Mrs. Chesson, will you do the honors? Yes, proposed ordinances 12. Proposed ordinance approving a temporary servitude agreement between Rhea Dill and the Fouche Parish government in the Raceland area and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement and any and all relevant documents. Mr. Terry Araby for administration. 13, proposed ordinance ordering and calling a special election to be held in special service district number one of the parish of Lafouche, state of Louisiana, to authorize the renewal of an ad valorem tax therein, making application to the state bond commission and providing for other matters in connection therewith. Mr. Jim Wendell for administration. 14, proposed ordinance providing for a 2022 supplemental appropriation 22-020 Within the, within the 2022 operations and maintenance budget and capital outlay budget, increasing the budget for priority road projects for RSTD-A and RSTD-2 and to cover shortfalls in the 2022 operational budget and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said transactions as provided for by Article 6 of the Lafouche Parish Home Rule Charter, Jerry Jones for administration. Number 15, proposed ordinance accepting the subdivision known as Cane Ridge Phase 2 into the parish system. Mr. Michael Grove for administration. Thank you, ma'am. We'll move into item K, resolutions. Uh, number 16, resolution appointing one member to the South Central Louisiana Human Services Authority Board. Motion by Mr. Adams. This was deferred from the 11-22-22 Parish Council meeting. Mr. Adams, who do you have? Aggie Thibodeau. Uh, Aggie Thibodeau. I have a second by Mr. Jones. Any council discussion? Take it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 17, resolution reappointing one member to the Lafouche Parish Animal Shelter Advisory Board representing Council District 2. Motion by Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams, who do you have? Dr. Kimberly Ruth. Dr. Kimberly Ruth, second by Mr. Jones. Any discussion? Take it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 18, resolution appointing one member to the Fire Protection District Number 3 Board. Motion by Mrs. Chasson. Mrs. Chasson, who do you have? Yes, sir. It was one vacancy, two applicants. Uh, Mr. Aaron Montez. Mr. Aaron Montez, second by Mr. Jones. Any discussion? Take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 19, resolution approving an agreement between Lafouche Parish Government and Streamlink Software Incorporated, doing business as Amplifund for grant management software and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement and any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mrs. Chasson. Any discussion? I right, will take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 20, resolution approving amendment number two to the agreement between Lafouche Parish Government and Nichols State University for the monitoring and data collection activities related to the Bayou Lewis Marsh Terraces Phase 4 project and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said amendment in any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Lorraine, second by Mr. Um, Otan. Any discussion? Take it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with eight yeas, zero nays, and one abstention being Mr. Adams. Item number 21, resolution approving an agreement between Lafouche Parish Government and Joe Stark, DVM of LIS of Lake Charles, LJS of Lake Charles, Incorporated to provide in-house veterinary services at the Lafouche Parish Animal Shelter and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement. I guess this was in 2017, 2018. Uh, Petco actually paid to have a medical suite built at the animal shelter. It's that little building in front of the, the kind of crappy building we have uh, where we can do surgeries, spays, neuters, all kind of weird stuff in that thing. None of the local vets wanted to actually use the building. Um, so we put out a basically a, a, a feeler to see who would want to do it. Um, Dr. Stark actually does a lot of business down here, even though he's from Lake Charles. So he was the only vet that was willing to agree to do it in-house. All It'll right, any money, other yeah. discussion? All right, we'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? 
Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 22, resolution accepting the low bid of Norris and Boudreaux Contractors, LLC, in the amount of $467,395.00 for the project title of Foosh Parish Street Maintenance and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement in any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Adams, second by Mr. Jones. Any discussion? All right, we'll take, I'm um, sorry, Mr. Lorraine. Yeah, first of all, uh, I'm not going to support this because I think a lot of small contractors are actually being cut out when you give this to one and the bids was, I, don't, I can't understand the bids, 467395 for Boudreaux and Louisiana contracting, $1,494,000. can not be apples to apples. It's got to be gold for Louisiana contracting. That's a million dollars difference? Come on. And I, I personally feel we have a lot of small contractors that used to get work with the parish that this cuts them out. Now, this guy does work, but if you're at the end of the line, you know how long you got to work? Wait. So I can't support that. All right. Any other discussion? Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, sir. I, I will say this is an open public bid process, Mr. Lorraine, so any contractor in anywhere could have could have bid on this. But if you look at the way the, the bid is done, the, the quantities in the bid items are what I will call phantom quantities, right? They're just, they're estimated quantities of what we think we might use to generate a full bid number. Norris and Boudreaux has done a really good job for us over the last couple of years. I think we provided to you all the projects that they've done based per district, uh, so you can see the work that's being done for you guys. Um, and although we may not go out to bid every single project, this actually saves us time because we don't have to wait to get three quotes from a contractor every single time something comes up. So we actually do more work in your districts with this setup than we would having to get three quotes every single time. That's your opinion. That ain't mine. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Grove. So am I wrong? In, uh, it's my understanding that uh, companies like Norris and Boudreaux, when we hire them, it's because so we, we you know, for things, let's say, like repairing a curb. We don't have a curb machine and it's something we can get them to get done pretty quick uh, and not have to go out for bid. That's right. But if it's something like uh, repairing a catch basin, which we can do in-house, we don't get them to do it, right? That's right. So these are things that are out of our comfort level yep. that we can do without having to get, so, you know, right? So, so, so the prime example I'll give you is something we do all the time, right? We do a, a drainage down a street, like Central Lafouche Drive that we did in Mr. Arby's district, right? Our guys are really good at putting the pipe in the ground, switching out driveway culverts. We don't have enough time to, to babysit the driveways, to do that many pours in one day. So our guys will go in and do the drainage work. We'll establish the limestone driveways. Tommy's crew will come back and pour seven, eight, ten driveways at a time. It's economies of scales that way. It's stuff that, while we have really good crews, stuff that we don't focus on a lot, that he can do very rapidly that our guys can't. That makes sense. Are we monitoring some of the work they've done? Like, hey, you know, we probably could buy this piece of equipment and, and do this ourselves moving forward. You know what I mean? If yeah. it's some repeat type uh, things that they're doing, yeah. you know. And if you look at the bid, there's also line items in there for, you know, a farm and a labor and machinery. So things like the new pond behind the community center in Lockport. That's stuff we can have Tommy do versus waiting to go out. As long as we keep it under that public bid law threshold that the state sets for in-house projects, we, can, we, can, we do stuff like that with them as well because, again, it's speedier than, than trying to, to, to publicly bid a lot of this stuff. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Ote. Yeah, so I can reinforce a speedy item. I had a, a, a constituent friend, uh, someone right around the corner from Archie, uh, that uh, a cover was placed on his driveway, and the parish had it on that to-do list to go and pour the cement, and eight months later, he decided to just pour his own cement. He got tired of waiting on the parish. So that's when I became in, in favor of having someone like this because it does happen a lot faster. Um, so anyway, I, that's why I'm, I fully support a uh, setup like this. Thank you, sir. Okay, item 22, original motion by Mr. Adams, second by Mr. Jones. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes with eight yeas, one nay being Mr. Lorraine. Uh, item 23, resolution accepting the quota Lafouche Animal Hospital to provide veterinary services on an as-needed and as-called-upon basis for Lafouche Parish Animal Shelter and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said contract and any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Adams. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman. 
Go ahead, sir. I, I know you guys just voted on the in-house vet. This is for anything that he can't do, uh, or for some reason he's not in the area and we have an emergency at the shelter. We, st we go with Lafouche Animal Hospital. Got it, sir. Any other discussion, questions? All right, we'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 24, resolution rescinding resolution number 22-244 that accepted the quote of Chasson's demolition LLC in the amount of $4,650.00 for contractor services related to the demolition of condemned structure located at 221 West 25th Street, La Rose, Louisiana, 70373, assessment number 01016709000, and authorizing the parish president to sign execute and administer any and all relevant documents motion by mrs chasson second by mr adams and as previously discussed there's no relation to mrs chasson or president chasson any discussion all right we'll take uh, item. Yeah. i'm so, sorry mr Grove. so um there was a bid on this obviously we you know and i pay attention to these because there's usually a big discrepancy on the uh demolition uh a lot of times do we just go to the one that are we going to put it out again we're going to put it out again there was, there was some ancillary issues around the house that he backed out because they have a travel trailer next to it. They couldn't yeah. move it. I mean, well, I think there's there's more than that. There's a whole bunch of junk around the house, but I don't think he felt safe doing the work. That's why he he backed out, or they backed out. So we can't force these people. I mean, like move your thing. We got it's a derelict property. We got to get out. I mean, the, the trailer's on wheels. I don't understand. I mean, they're living in it. Oh, they live. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. It's a, it's a it's a state camper shelter unit. Yeah. All right, item 24, motion by Mrs. Chasson, second by Mr. Adams. With no further discussion, we'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 25, resolution approving amendment number one to the agreement between Lafouche Parish Government and Witt O'Brien's LLC for contractor services related to monitoring of disaster generated debris removal management and technical assistance and authorizing the parish president to sign execute and administer said amendment in any and all relevant documents motion by mr adams second by mr jones any discussion take it to a vote all in favor any opposed motion passes with nine yeas zero nays item 26 resolution approving an agreement between the Fouche parish government and Remont Engineering and Design Group LLC for the project title Lafouche Parish Pump Station SCDA and Control System and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement in any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Adams, second by Mrs. Chassel. Any discussion? Mr. Uh, Melvin. Yes, sir. I had a quick question. Um, I was discussing with some other council members. Um, do all of our pump stations now have float switches? Not all of them, but a okay. majority do. And just FYI, I know this is government. I know this is, you know, serious business with our pump stations. We want them running. I don't, I'm not saying get rid of any pumpers, but I know when I used to work at a plant, uh, for those that don't know how float switch works, it just has a, bo flam a buoyant thing that water lifts it up, flips a switch, and on goes your pump. Water recedes, shuts it off, etc. It's really easy. And I think all of our pump stations should have it in the event that, Let's say a pumper, something happens, a, an act of God or something, or it's a miscue. Somebody doesn't get to a pump station, water's getting high really fast, and then our phones start ringing, and God forbid, there's a flood, okay? So uh, to me, a pump state, a float switch is really easy, but what is this, what is this going to do exactly here? Because I, I read it, but I'm, I'm just, is this like for all pump stations maintenance? Or so what? this contract yeah. just sets us up to, to move the ball forward and start the process. This would do 10 of the newer stations. Um, this is going to allow us to do a lot of things. We're going to be able to see the fuel of the station, the water level of the station. It'll even alarm us if there's a high water level on the outside the rake, but a low water level on the inside the sump, which tells us that there's a blockage at the station, there's trash. So we know immediately we need to mobilize equipment to remove debris from the screen. I and mean, he's going to do a lot of things. So for you'll us. be able to turn it on? I'll like, be able to start the pump, turn it off, lock it out when somebody's working on it. Happened. Yes, yes. And there'll be you know, a, a system of alarms. We, we're hoping to, and look, this is in the infant stages. This is kind of all in our, in our head at this point. But once we get this contract, we'll start moving on it. And we've discussed this mission. I've discussed this in depth with this company, and they can do all of it. But it'll be to the point where we'll get an email. When one alert happens, you'll get a text on the next alert. If nobody's responding to that, there'll be a phone call that's, that's given to the pumper, the, the supervisor. And everybody's going to be notified at some point. So uh, it's a really good thing. And just to give you an idea, we we automate every pump station we can with floats. Um, floats are very cheap and they're very effective. The problem comes to be when you get to some of these engines from the 40s, 50s, and 60s, 
we have to do a um, an upgrade on the engine itself, which gets fairly expensive for it to be automated. It needs a, a automated governor on it, so that that'll run us in the area twenty five hundred to three grand to add it to it. So we have on some of our older stations, but it's kind of a priority thing, right? We can only do so many a year to upgrade it. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Grove, we still will have pump operators, though. Okay. And then the other question I had and noticed in some of the verbiage was about like a confidential and proprietary information. One of the things that I enjoyed getting, it was kind of alarming at times uh, over the past two uh, terms of serve, is about how many pumps were actually broken. You know, when you, you know, Ms. Carlene and I supported by a certain pump, and we're like, whoa, half this thing's out. You know, like what is going on? Y'all have been very transparent. Will we get information to where we can put that in our new uh, landing page to where, you know, our, our website shows a lot of stuff. If there's a storm, somebody wants to look and see what pumps are on, and we'll be able to put that up. Yeah. And so, T. Bigger Smith had mentioned their GIS portal. We're, we're planning to integrate this and do a, um, like a resident viewer page where they won't be able to see all of the details of the pump station that they don't need to see, but the, the age-old question we get, is the pump on, right? Yeah. They'll be able to see things like that. They'll right. be able to look at water surface elevation. Is the pump running? How many pumps yeah. are running? Uh, I got to text you. you gotta, you'd have to text Gary, and then Gary got to text the pump. Correct. I mean, so now it'll be a site that you'll, you know, and, so. and look, this, uh, we say that, but this isn't going to be up tomorrow, right? All right. It, it may take a while. And I want to add one other thing. This is going to be a really good system for us when we get to a disaster like Ida, where we need to track all of this stuff. This thing is going to track, it. the SCADA system is going to plug directly into the wiring harness of the engine. It'll tell us uh, engine operating temp, um, oil pressure, everything. So we're going we're gonna to be able to see hours, engine hours, run time, all of that's going to be accurate. So when FEMA comes and access for all of this information, we'll be able to click it from a date to a date and print out. So all of the people that are, that are filling out all this paperwork and going over this stuff over and over again to submit it, it's all going to be done for us in, in the click of a button. It's going to be constantly tracking. Thank you, sir. Mr. Otan. Yes, yeah, so I was going to ask you about the GIS status. I'm glad you referenced it. Uh, curious to know if North Lafourche Levy District is also involved in this. And but before I go that far, I'll just comment. Uh, Bo mentioned about floats and and uh, you know, from the private sector, I can tell you, floats. Yeah, they're nice, and there are there are actually different types of floats than what you just referenced. Lots of different types, but um, you definitely have to have redundancy. And I'll tell you, uh, Bo, just for for reference, uh, in the private sector, you typically have uh, engines or pumps on floats, and you have some that are not that are only manual operated because if that pump fails, if that float system fails, and you burn that pump up, you don't want to burn all your pumps up because then you're out of commission. That happens. That's real, real to store. But anyway, can you comment on North Laf Lafourche Levy? Yeah. And I just add one thing that you said. We have fail safes on all of our pumps for the shut off, so we don't burn pumps up. So it, in order for a pump to shut off, it has to two floats would have to fail. I'm not telling you it doesn't happen, but odds are odds are less. Um, North Lafourche Levy District currently has a, a program right now through GIS that they monitor some of these pump stations. Um, we're going to just compound on what they have, and we're planning to work together with them. There's going to have to be a CEA drafted at a later date, but um, they have a, a huge interest in what we want to see. Uh, we have an interest in, a shared interest in what they want to see as well, so um, some things they want to add to it are outside gauges that would tie into our system, so they would see the gauge on the outside the levy system where the pump is discharging, which is very useful for them and useful for us as well. So yeah, we plan to work with them on that. Mr. Gotcha. I'm going to abstain. I used to work for Remont. Gotcha. Okay, on um, uh, item 26, motion by Mr. Adams, second by Mrs. Chasson. With no further discussion, we'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with eight yeas, zero nays, and one abstention being Mr. Adams. Item 27, resolution approving an agreement between the Louisiana Housing Corporation and Lafourche Parish Government, Office of Community Action for the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, LAHEAP, fiscal year 2023, and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement and any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Adams. Any council discussion? All right, we'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 28, resolution approving a subboard grant agreement between the Louisiana Workforce Commission, Office of Workforce Development, and Lafourche Parish Council, Office of Community Action for the Community Services Block Grant, fiscal year 2023, and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement and any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mrs. Chasson. Any discussion? We'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. 
Item 29, resolution approving an agreement between Lafourche Parish Government and David A. Waits Engineering and Surveying Incorporated for engineering services for the project title Priority Road List 2022, Road Sales Tax District A, Road Improvement Project, and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement and any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Adams, second by Mr. Jones. Any discussion? We'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 30, resolution approving an agreement between the Fouche Parish Government and PCO and Associates Incorporated for engineering services for the project title Priority Road List 2022, Road Sales Tax District 2, Road Improvement Project, and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement in any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mrs. Chasson, second by Mr. Adams. Any discussion? Take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 31, resolution approving amendment number one to the agreement between Lafouche Parish Government and DRC, Emergency Services LLC, for contractor services relative to disaster debris removal and recovery services and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said amendment in any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Adams, second by Mr. Jones. Any discussion? We'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 32, resolution accepting the low bid of Edward J. Laparouse Metalworks Incorporated in the amount of $1,739,000.00 for the project title Hurricane Ida, Ida Damage Roof Replacements to Matthews and Galliano Government Complexes and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer an agreement and any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Adams, second by Mr. Jones. Uh, any discussion? Take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 33, resolution approving an agreement between Arthur J. Gallagher Risk Management Services Incorporated and Lafouche Parish Government for a commercial insurance package as quoted and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement and any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Grove, second by Mr. Otan. Any discussion? We'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 34, resolution approving an agreement between Lafouche Parish Government and Larissa Insurance L Agency, LLC, to provide commercial property, equipment floater, and boiler and machinery coverages as quoted, and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement in any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Gross, second by Mr. Otan. Any discussion? All right, we'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with eight yeas, zero nays, and one abstention being Mr. Melvin. Item 35, resolution approving an agreement between Lafouche Parish Government, Greater Lafouche Port, Port Commission, and Energy Louisiana for reliable power during future disasters and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement and any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mrs. Chasson, second by Mr. Jones. Any discussion? We'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 36, resolution accepting the low bid of Roofing Solutions LLC in the amount of $1,156,922.00 for the project titled Hurricane Ida Repairs, Third Block Building, Phase 1, and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer an agreement in any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Groh, second by Mr. Adams. Any discussion? We'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 37, resolution approving a cooperative endeavor agreement between Lafouche Parish Government and the State of Louisiana Facility Planning and Control for the Butch Hill Pump Station Replacement Planning and Construction Project and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer said agreement in any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Araby, second by Mr. Ota. Any discussion? We'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item 38, resolution approving an addendum number one to task order number two within the agreement between Lafouche Parish Government and High Tide Consultants, LLC, for the drainage and pump station projects and authorizing the parish president to sign, execute, and administer any and all relevant documents. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Adams. Any discussion? We'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Moving to item L. Pursuant to Louisiana Revised Statute 42, 19.1, Notice of Consideration of Action Regarding Ad Valorem Tax. 
Number 39, notice is hereby given that the Parish of Lafourche de Louisiana will meet on Tuesday, January 10th, 2023 at 5 p.m. at the Matthews Government Complex, 4876 Highway 1, Matthews, Louisiana, at which time there will be consideration of action regarding the calling of an election regarding the renewal of an existing ad valorem tax currently being levied and dedicated to constructing, acquiring, improving, and maintaining lighting facilities on the streets, roads, highways, alleys, and in public places in the rural, rural areas of the parish, and paying the costs associated with the abatement and or control of public nuisances in rural areas of the parish, such as the destruction and or disposal of abandoned properties and condemned buildings, provided that at least 60% of the annual proceeds of the tax shall be budgeted for public lighting purposes. And that is for uh, Mr. Adams on behalf of administration. Item M, Parish President, Department Heads, Directors, or Managers Reports. Number 40, Department of Public Works Rec Representative to present a report. Hello, Mr. Baroni. Good evening. I want to start off by saying this is a little lengthy presentation. You will see some stuff that we completed in October and November. Because we didn't have the first meeting in November, I didn't get the report. So we have combined both for tonight. <clears throat> Starting with the Thibodeau Field Office, Boudreaux Lane, Outfall, Swept Outfall. Midway pump outfall, swept outfall. This is Price Lane. We repaired a culvert joint. Colony Station, clean culverts. Ravier Avenue, replace undersized driveway culverts. It's actually two of them. And same thing on Oak Lane, replace undersized driveway culverts. And a few improvements in this area. This is Mary Street at Oak Lane. This was a replacement of some undersized cross culverts. Half Oak Drive replaced a collapsed driveway culvert. Moving to the Choctaw Field Office, this is Ashton Levy Outfall, swept the outfall. Choctaw North Levy cleaned the borrow canal. Choctaw Road replaced collapsed driveway culvert. Moving to the Baya Blue Field Office, this is Division Street, swept roadside ditches. We also swept roadside ditches on Ida Street, Ontario Street. Stacy Drive, clean culverts. Moving to the Raceland Field Office, this is St. Charles Bypass Road uh, in the front. Repaired the shoulder. District 1 to 12 Borough Canal, swept the canal. Rose Street, swept roadside ditches. Con Street, swept roadside ditches. St. Charles Bypass Road, swept outfall. This is District 3 of 12, or the Crest Pump Station, swept reservoir. X Bypass Road, swept outfall. The Lockwood Field Office, this is Adams Street, clean culverts, as well as St. Anthony Street. This is Eunice Alamo Pump Station, swept the pump canal. Oak R Street, repaired road base failure. This is Ravenswood Pump Station. Swept pump canal. Sugarland Drive, this is a temporary pothole repair. Superior Drive, swept south side outfall. Fantastic Drive, swept outfall. Lark Drive, swept roadside ditches. Chester Lee, removed collapsed landscape culverts. Moving to the Galliana Field Office, this is East First Street, removed collapsed landscape culvert and replaced two driveway culverts. East 23rd Street, replaced the collapsed driveway culvert. West 53rd Street, swept roadside ditches. <clears throat> East 90th Street, installed driveway culvert. East 7th Street, installed driveway culvert. Moon and the maintenance contract is the work they completed in the last two months. This is North Napoleon, replaced the collapsed cross culvert. This is Cyprian Pump Station, installed trash cranes. Chateau Drive, repair broken panels. Taylor James Parkway, repair broken panels. This is Klein Peter Drive, repair broken panels. For the October work, we had one permanent servitude acquired, one major subdivision inspection, and seven property redivision reviews, one major subdivision review, there were 40 culvert permits and two, firm, two fence permits issued. Um, 
we received 146 online work order requests. 123 permits were reviewed for compliance. I'll skip the next three because they're updated on the next slide. And for November, we had one permanent servitude acquired, one major subdivision inspection, and four property redivision reviews. One major subdivision review, nine culvert permits, and one fence permit were issued. We received 85 online work order requests, 72 permits were reviewed for compliance. Currently, we have 28 projects that are in the design phase, 12 projects that are under construction, one project that's out to bid, and one project that is recently complete. And with that, I'll entertain any questions. Any part of anything for Dylan? Mr. Adams. Well, of course I'm going to ask. So how are you doing, Mr. <coughs> LaFouche? Doing well. All right. So I know on November 17th, we started a conversation about the Choctaw Road. Yes, sir. And uh, it's more or less the Choctaw Coaster because, I mean, it's really nice and wavy. So uh, I know we had emails back and forth. So had anything come up since then? Last Wednesday, we met uh, the engineer, the contractor, and LPG on site. The contractor does intend to fix it. We started those conversations. Um, they will be back on site to fix it. We just don't know when. Okay, so, so it will be fixed. It will be fixed, yes, sir. We Dang, LPG right. is not accepting it. In the, yeah. In so y'all won't accept, accept it, right? No, you know, sir. Throwing it back. All right, just no, making sir. sure. Thank you. And they are aware of it. They understand that we're not yeah. going to accept it. So All right. They're working towards a solution for us. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Mr. Melvin. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Dylan, thank you all for keeping up with everything. Um, I was curious. Um, I'm going to be sending you an email um, from holiday to the... Uh, 28, 26, whatever y'all call it. Um, the ditch where that the sewer lift station's on at Holiday, it's pretty silted over. I mean, it, the grass is cut, but it's just the guy told me it's real silted over. So we'll see about that. Um, okay. Also, um, just FYI, there's car break-ins at Lake Buff. I'm still hearing about it. I don't know if we, whatever happened to cameras and everything we talked about last admin, I don't know if that got sidetracked or what's happening, but I, I know that there's some it's not just lifting handles. People are fishing, people breaking their windows and getting, getting their goodies. Also, a cement line ditch and park site on the golf side, I'm told, is still backwashing. And, and look, I know that's not y'all. Last administration should have put that lip on the side. We wouldn't even be having a conversation. So we, you know, we, we did a repair. We did realize that as we did this repair, whatever was happening, whether it's stumps rotting or voids filling, we're probably going to have to continue doing that. So our, our process is just to be continue Back to add rocks Back and hopefully that it stops one day. Okay, and rocks I mean, the without us doing major excavation and, and looking yeah, yeah. into it, and I don't think the dish has been there long enough for us right, to right. do that. Right, so, so. so you thinking, I mean, is it, I mean I'm just curious again, is rocks the way to go or is it yes. some other type of dirt? Yes, I don't know. Um, okay. because if, if the land's leaving, if we put sand, you need something small, granular that's going to fall okay. in the hole. Um, and also, if we put sand, um, it's liable to end up in the ditch, so which is a bigger problem. Yeah, so we're going to continue yeah, yeah. with small aggregate. Okay, good. Um, and also, in back across the north, it's not really a detention pond, but we know that there's a little a belly that that forms off of. Is that, is that, that's the 28 again. That's not the 40, correct? That's correct. Okay. So I know that this lilies, this alligators, etc. I get calls. Y'all get calls. I'm wondering, do you know? I know the levy district is charge of the canal, the levy. We still help with drainage. Do you know who actually owns that belly of behind the houses to the 28? Do you know? I mean, is it us? So I know nobody's going to claim it. Um, I will say that the parish does not accept any ponds whatsoever. Any subdivision that has a pond in it, the parish does not accept the pond or the maintenance of that pond. Right. And this Typically, is like, it's done by an HOA. Yeah, and this is like part of the, the 28. So my question, again, maybe you don't know, but would the clerk know? Who owns that void? So I respond. I got the same email I think you got from one of the constituents. In all of the documents that we have, when we accepted the subdivision, we didn't take ownership of it. Okay. So it's either the developer or a no man's land. You know, my recommendation to the neighborhood was that if you had an HOA, then the HOA needs to spray it. I mean, the, the lilies in the pond, while unsightly, don't really affect drainage. Okay. Uh, it's just more of an aesthetic issue, which is, I hate to break it, but not really our problem. Right. That's what I explained as well. I'm just trying to figure out who's on first so that maybe they can go that way. But um, okay. Um, I think. Uh, I think that does it. Thank you. <clears throat> thanks, sir. If, that, if that's it, I just want to say thanks for approving the maintenance contractor. Uh, we worked with them for two years. They do really good work for us. Uh, happy to see that they want it again. We have a good relationship. Um, just so you all know, we do have a project manager that works with them day in and day out. We watch every single project they do, making sure we get in a quality project. Um, we have so far. I think they've been really good to the parish. Um, Councilman Otan mentioned how, how quick of a turnaround. I think that's sped up a lot since we've been here. 
Um, and I think we're getting a really good product from those guys. Just to add to what President Chesson said, any time, you know, a lot of these field offices, we have anywhere from, I'm going to say, you know, as little as six to as many as 15 employees. If we have a project that takes six or eight of those guys to do one job, we're giving it to the maintenance contractor. We don't want, because then we're stopping cutting grass, we're stopping digging ditches. You know, we want to do the job that take one to two to three guys to do. So anytime you would see a project where there's seven parish employees on a project, we're going to give it to the maintenance contractor and let them do it. That's kind of our deciding factor, because um, anybody who's in the labor force now realizes that it's impossible to find people to work and to come to work every day. So we, um, you know, we do have really good employees. We keep those guys busy every day, but we don't want to do those projects that require a bunch of people in one spot. If that thank, clarifies Thank anything. you, Dylan. Thank you all. Somebody needs to check Mr. Jones's life. Mr. LaFouche was up there and nothing. Which brings us to item Great N, job. discussion. Item 41, discussion current concerning the commercial buildings and homes damaged due to Hurricane Ida. Mr. Lorraine. Yes, uh, we have these shopping centers in South LaFouche, and I'm sure there's damage throughout the whole parish. And it doesn't seem like anything is getting done to clean this up. It should be their responsibility. 308, I get all kind of complaints. Got a beautiful subdivision right behind it. It's nothing but junk. I reported it. And if we got to wait for the parish to do something, we only, we only do 20 a year. It's going to take 100 years. Unless FEMA kicks in. Uh, I think these people that have these buildings, I got a hotel. Sent it in since March, April. I got them all right here. I got Safari Heights. Unbelievable. You got people complaining because what's happening, you got some people that has a destroyed house. They pack up and leave. They're out of here. But yet the neighbors got to put up with it. So somebody needs to get going on this because you know what? And six months from now, we're back to hurricane again, hurricane season. So these shopping centers are terrible. The one in La Rose, the one in my district, plus quite a few other things. And I don't know what FEMA's going to do or not going to do or what. We got trash all over the place. River Birch is uh, so-so. But I was told that the uh, big trucks were going to come back after the holidays, and uh, so we need to do something. We can't keep these shopping centers just looking at it. People are very, very upset, and you can't blame them. Can't blame them. So try and get something done. It's not funny. I'm, you, I'm, I'm laughing at the chairman. Oh, you, you're you're not laughing at me. You're no, laughing sir. at me. No, okay, sir. okay. But that's, you know, we got, we got to get something going, man. We can't keep this going like this. So, Mr. Chairman, if I can. I'd, Certainly. I, I will tell you, Mr. Lorraine, we've had over 350 some odd people sign up for the FEMA demolition program. Uh, in March or May, we sent about 150 of those packets to FEMA. We've only got about 30 of them back. Uh, I think they knocked out about nine of them this week of those 30 that we've gotten back, most of which were in South Lafouche. Um, so it's, it's a very slow process for us. Um, we, we talk to the residents quite often who call in the complaints. Uh, from, a, from a regular nuisance abatement standpoint, as most of you know, that process is about a six-month process because of the way we have to notice them. If any of you would like to change that law, I'd back you 100% because I think we need to strengthen that up because we get to the point where we have several properties like that, and you know it, Mr. Lorraine. We go clean them three, four, five times. We have three, four, or five liens on the property. We, we finally, uh, thanks to Assessor Thibodeau, was able this year to put those liens on the tax rolls. So people either paid off the liens finally or we're going we're gonna to have the property adjudicated to us and then we could sell it and put it back into commerce. But it's, it's just a lengthy process that is just completely a pain in the butt. If yeah, I, I agree with you on that with FEMA because a lot of people are waiting on FEMA. No doubt. And they're going to get tired of waiting because they're going to wait forever. Look at the night ward. In New Orleans, you still got some houses not clean 20 years ago. So all these people that's counting on FEMA, I think they, they're going to have a rude awakening. But these big commercial buildings, FEMA ain't touching that. That's the owner's responsibility. And some of them owners don't even live here. So I think we need to, 
Whatever we need to do to get them to do it, we need to do it, whatever it takes. And we have. Mr. Passman's been really good. We've been working on some apartments in Mr. Arby's district as well. Uh, we've talked to, about the city place apartments in Councilman Otan's district, working with the housing authority because that's a public building. But again, it's just the process. We have to track down the owners. We have to notice them. They have so many days to, to rectify the situation. I know, I know, I get you. I'm frustrated with you for once. We agree on something. I'm just not sure how we fix it without changing the law, really. Right, right. But I mean, it's just, just think about in six months where we at. Thank you, gentlemen. And if we can have a subject matter expert from the inside look at the process and clean it up and then get legal to make sure it's legal, that's, that'd be something that I could sponsor and get behind because this is definitely a, a hair pulling, you know, thing to get done. Uh, item 42, discussion regarding dispensing with Lafourche Parish Council, December 27, 2022 meeting. I have a motion by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Adams to dispense with that meeting due to the Christmas holidays. Any discussion? Take it to a vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas, zero nays. Item O, oh, questions for the administration. Anybody? Mr. Otan. Yes, yeah, so comments. So, Archie, you beat me to the punch because I was going to thank you for continuously poking uh, people like the City Plays Group because that's, that's a nightmare over there. And I know we just got another email update. So I thank the administration for continuing to poke people because, as uh, Daniel said, it'll take forever if we have to do all of them. Uh, some people have got to pull up their trousers and take care of some of this business themselves. Um, with that said, I want to do like some others did earlier and just thank the administration, um, you know, for, for getting us through another difficult year as we continue to, to, to trudge through the, the lingering COVID humbug and as well as through this uh, nightmare of Ida. And I know that we still have a lot of challenges uh, going into next year with, with resolving uh, the Ida issues. I will tell the, the citizens of Lafourche, my Christmas wish is that we all slow down a little bit, spend a little more time with uh, family and friends. And uh, with that said, I just want to wish a Merry Christmas and, uh, and a Happy New Year from Nikki and I. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Ota. Mrs. Chasson. Mr. President, the mosquitoes. I know it's not just cut off or Golden Meadow. I, I know it's, but, but are we doing extra spraying by any chance? Some aerial spraying? I mean, they are ridiculously bad. We, we haven't done any aerial spraying. I know Mosquito Control has done some extra passes with the trucks. Um, if it's if it's all of, I mean, we get if you have any hot spots in particular, if it's all of South Lafourche with Am I've seen some of it on Facebook. Oh, it's bad. So I will talk to we'll talk to them in the morning and see if we can do some some extra. Stuff. And I'm I mean, cold weather's coming supposedly. Hopefully. <laughs> and hopefully it'll kill, kill them. them off. But yeah, it's it's really bad. You're like it's scary to just go outside. Thank you, ma'am, Mr. Araby. Mr. Chasson, <clears throat> can you give me an update? And also to the general public about you, what you and I were working on with DOTD yep. as far as the intersection at 182 and Highway 90. Can you give me a, what's the feedback on it from DOTD? Yeah, so, so, so for the rest of you guys to know, after the latest fatality, Councilman Arab and I talked to DOTD about kind of clearing out that little teardrop section. Uh, there's a bunch of trees in there. I know Councilman Adams has talked about the yielding part of it when we come back from the other direction. Uh, we made the request to DOTD to clear cut the entire teardrop area. Uh, I talked to them Friday, yesterday, whatever day it was, uh, and they will not let us clear the entire area. Uh, they're worried about the area being too wet uh, and the tractors not being able to, to maintain it and we get willow trees and Johnson grass. Uh, they're only going to allow us to clear about a 10 foot swath of it. Um, whether or not that's exactly worth it, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. We're going to go out and look at it and see, um, but we'll continue to trudge away. I, I did talk to Representative Fontenot last night. Um, and kind of getting a gauge of what they think the, the future plan is going to look like for that intersection. Uh, we were told that there was going to be an emergency project to shut down the intersection, make a J-turn. That's been 60, 90 days ago, whatever, how long, how long it's been, unfortunately. Um, they did tell me on Friday there is a project that's in some design work to do some, some work there, uh, but they're not thinking that's going to go out to bid until the spring of 2023. Okay. I know. Uh. <laughs> I know frustrating but a while back I talked to you uh, uh, about one of my constituents uh, had some questions about the Butch Hill pump station did you get a chance to get with him and meet with him or, or go over the plans with him I do not think so that we were able to contact Mr. Lesko um, but we'll do it we'll yeah, do it he had contacted holidays. me again you know yeah. he talked to me at a Christmas party the other night and asked yeah. me about it I said well and I did also have a conversation with that constituent on St. Anthony Street 
that we talked about last week that you sent me his number. I talked to him over the weekend. Um, so we're working on some ideas of how to handle that. Thank you. Yeah, so you know the house I'm talking about on St. Anthony Street. Uh, the, the neighborhood requested a meeting with us to try to figure out what we could do. Uh, they did tell me that there was somebody who kind of cleaned up the property uh, over the, like, the course of the last couple of days. I got that from Coach at a basketball game on Sunday. Um, so we're going to work with the sheriff's office to figure out what the long-term plan is for that person from a legal standpoint. Um, there was an incident a couple of nights ago last week uh, where he was making threats to the neighborhood. Uh, so we're trying to figure out what, what we can do about that long term with, with that particular person. I appreciate it, Archie. And look, the sheriff's been involved, State Farm Marshal's been involved, the district attorney's been involved, the coroner's been involved. So everybody and their mama's been involved. So anything, if you can make something happen, awesome. Kudos. All righty. Thank you, gentlemen. Item P, Parish President's final comments. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very briefly, I just want to let you guys know, um, Dylan and Mitch uh, led a meeting last week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, part of Friday with uh, a group from FEMA out of Denton who actually obligates our project, similar to what Ms. Karen talked about earlier. Um, we all left that meeting feeling much better about the path forward on a lot of our projects and the 100 plus million dollars, especially in pump stations. I will tell you that we not only took FEMA to the damaged pump stations, Bobcat and Councilman Wendell's district, uh, Magnolia, a couple of the other ones, uh, but we also took them to Coastal uh, and Cyprian. Uh, and I will tell you that FEMA was very shocked about the fact that we spend our local tax dollars on stuff like that. Uh, they always see counties and other officials wait on FEMA to pay for those types of situations. Uh, and you guys know for years we've taxed ourselves for levies and flood protection. So they were very pleased to see the newer stations that were built in the last five or so years that have, have really come off. So I, I, I appreciate that. And, and hopefully we see some good direction forward now that they've come down here and actually put their eyes on, on what it looks like in Lafourche. Uh, I want to echo what you guys said. I want to thank you guys for another good year. Um, I know that, that we do our best from an administrative standpoint to be as transparent as we can. Uh, and work through issues with you guys. And while we don't always agree uh, from time to time, we do it very civilly. And we've been keeping out the newspaper the last three years. So that's a, a good track forward. I also want to thank, I know we have some engineers in the room for all their hard work, uh, especially post IDA and getting our stuff back up and running our contractors. Uh, but most of all, the 325 plus employees that we have that wake up every day and bust our butts for Lafouche Parish. We owe those guys a huge debt of gratitude. Uh, we are going to have our employee luncheon uh, and year end training tomorrow. You guys are all invited to that. It's at the Lockport Community Center. Uh, lunch by Gina's at the Legion. So come enjoy a good time. Again, thank you. Uh, and finally, I just want to thank Councilman Jones for wearing his green jacket too. Uh, we wore green Daniel to combat the red because we're going to take all the money from down the bay and bring it north. So we appreciate that, sir. Y'all have, for my family to yours, y'all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Mr. Melvin, you had a comment? Hey. I can pass for Mr. Kangaroo and that's Mr. Gene Green. Just real quick, uh, yeah, did pass. FEMA say if they were going to send us some of the 40 to 60, 80 billion we've sent to the Ukraine in the last Absolutely year? Absolutely not. Like my dollars? No, but they'll pay for solar panels for your street lights. So we, I think we make some progress. And cut my power, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move into item Q. Uh, adjournment. On a motion by Mr. Adams, second by Mr. Jones, and with no further business, the Lafourche Parish Council, regular meeting of December 13, 22, be adjourned. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with nine yeas and zero nays at 6.39 p.m.